I had a hard time coming up with this introduction, so you guys better be pretty freaking happy. Hi, hi everyone, it's Celeste, and today we have a very special video for you. This one comes from a request a month ago from a YouTuber named Tracy, Tracy Soden. If I say this correctly, please let me know. She actually requested me to make an Egyptian anime themed wedding dress. And I had the hardest time coming up with a design because Egyptians, back in the past, they used to just wrap cloth around their body and expose their boobs. And that's obviously not something we can do in today's society. And I was actually doing a lot of historical research and then anime research, which means we have to find a common ground. The first thing that I thought of was Ishizu Ishtar from Yu-Gi-Oh! I definitely thought that Ishizu would be a great outfit, but then I was like, but it's just a plain white dress. And I wasn't really enthralled with that idea of becoming into a wedding dress, so I searched the internet high and low, and I found a few different things that I liked, but it looked like a bad Halloween costume. Thus began my journey researching anime, different ones that I've seen, ones in the past, what would be acceptable, what would I want to wear. So the idea that I came up with was this little number. This dress is actually the dress from Cleopatra from Fate Go or Fate Grand Order. When I had asked my friends on my Facebook, hey, name something that has desert sand references or Egyptian references. A lot of it came to Yu-Gi-Oh! so I had to make a disclaimer, don't include Yu-Gi-Oh! And my friend Rachel Marie, aka Lucky Groom Cosplay, she actually gave me this idea of Cleopatra and Fake Go, which I have installed on my phone. No, I am not sponsored. So anyways, I saw her outfit and I'm just like, Oh, I need that. Thus began my Fate Go wedding dress cosplay. I wanted this to be able to be used at a convention just in case someone was going to have a cosplay wedding at a convention or even simulate it without being raunchy because this character in this outfit exposes her freaking panties. And we do not expose panties on our wedding days. So, without further ado, I hope you enjoy my Cleopatra Faco wedding dress. And that's because it was requested by Tracy Soden. So, thanks. I hope you guys enjoy. And leave me a comment down below if you do enjoy this video or if you have any other special requests. So, let's get this video going. And, yeah, I'm rambling now. So if you remember, I got this purple dress and I recycled it into my crazy rich Asians wedding dress. I cut up the skirt part and I put it into the dress, so all I'm left with is the top. Oh, I love this dress, don't you? So this is the top that's left over and I want to use this as a way to pattern the top. And of course, I'm going to have to modify it. So. I'll have to remove the laces first and the lace. So I'm going to start off by drawing on it and marking where I want to cut and modify this pattern. As you can see I modified the top piece and I cut off the bottom and I cut off the back as well and I made it very symmetrical. I'm going to be using this type of chiffon jersey kind of like stretchy material and it's see-through. If you can find something like that, that's great. If not, use your regular chiffon, but this one of mine is stretchy. It's like a knit chiffon or something. I don't know what it is. My main fabric is going to be a white stretch taffeta. I use this a lot and it's a very forgiving fabric. So I'm going to be using that pattern that I did and I'm going to be seam ripping the princess seams at the bust and then pinning and cutting it down. I just wanted to show you what it will look like. Here, I'm trying to recycle as much of the fabric here. And now, make sure you cut like a 12 inch strip of the white chiffon. And that's because we're going to be using that draping across the bodice piece. And that's going to create the ruffling effect and save a lot of other fabric rather than just draping it completely at the top. Make sure to cut it in half because we're going to be doing some different pieces. Now for the sleeves, I'm going to be cutting out an 8 inch strip 
and I'm going to cut that out and cut it in half again just like the top. Because this fabric is stretchy, I have a lot of room to play with it, but I don't think I have a really long shoulder strap. So now you can see this is where I'm at, and I'm going to show you draping. Luckily I have a mannequin so I can show you what draping is. You just pin it down and hold it and slowly scrunch it and let it hang freely. And then you mark and pin it down. Obviously I'm going to be using the pink, fa the purple fabric as the lining, so yeah. In the description, I'll leave a pattern that is very similar. We also want to make sure that we have a crisscross pattern going on the top like a kimono wrap. Here you can see I'm cutting out the top piece of the fabric. I went back and I double thought about ripping out the seams and that was going to take a while. So instead, I just cut it directly on there without the princess seam, which I mean, because this is a stretch material, it didn't do too bad. But here you can see I'm giving extra length so that I can do a crisscross pattern. And I'm cutting down the bottom because I cut it on the fold. Obviously, pin your piece to your lining piece and make sure you only sew the bottom and the top and the back together but not the complete front and that's because we want to make sure that you can crisscross the top. I haven't even added the draping yet and we'll show you how to do that later but begin to sew that. So now I'm going to be attaching the chiffon at the top and I'm flipping it up so that it's not laying directly on top but make sure you sew as close as to the edge as possible and we are going to flip the chiffon down after. Now make sure that you go all the way across the top except for the part where you're going to layer on top of it, meaning the crisscross part. I will show you that briefly in a second but take your time with this and make sure that you push it and ruffle it while you're sewing so that you get a very gathered effect. Now before we get to the very top edge, we are going to fold over our shoulder piece and make sure it's gathered very nicely and then put it in between the seam there. You can do this in the front part where the fold is or you could do it on the back part. Either way, you're going to have to adjust it when you have to sew it down in the back anyways. So sew that in between and sandwich it and that way when you pull down the fabric, it's going to overlap and hide the seam. Later we will be adding a black piece of fabric to cover this, so if it's not perfect, don't fret. So here I want to show you how it looks just having the overlay on top of it folded downwards. And you can start to see it really taking shape and how I got that ruching gathered effect of the chiffon. And it looks very romantic and it's not even finished! Just kidding, begin sewing it down and pinning it and then sewing it down. So now you can see after I pinned and sewed it down and added extra fabric because I ran out, this is what it looks like when the first part is done. And that is gathered and sewn at the bottom part. Now I'll repeat for the other side and that is what it looks like. The top part was a little bit difficult and I did the same way, but I don't really like how the top became so I'm just going to fold in that top hem and fold it in and sew it down. Now I'm cutting off the excess chiffon fabric. I don't need it and I already have this hemline and it is beautiful. If you want to see a little bit more detail of me doing layered chiffon gathering, let me know in a comment down below. I'm cutting as close as I can to the seam line, that way I don't have any extra problems and it's seamless. And when you are finished doing that, you can serge the edges or zigzag stitch it. Because this is an empire skirt, we are going to need to measure from the bust line down to the floor and make sure that if you're going to be wearing high heels that you add a few extra inches for that as well. So measure around your bust or your bra size is the greatest way to do it. Mine is 32. So I will be taking that and dividing it by two 
and I use that as a reference to cut out the top for my seam. <laughs> and then for my length, I think I'm really short, so. So this number for me was like 45 inches. If you're a taller person, you're definitely going to have to buy a lot more fabric and you're gonna have to cut out multiple skirts. For me, I chose the three different skirts and then of course we're going to have to have the chiffon layer on top. So make sure that you begin slowly patterning out where your skirt lines need to be from 45 if you're like 5-0 like me and then to your bust line and slowly create a curved pattern and you can see me slowly adding the lines together and connecting the dots because you want it to curve you want to move it in a circular motion and you can see me do that here usually once I have one skirt pattern cut out I'm able just to copy it but like make sure that you're happy with how it lays first after you cut it out one of the big reasons why we want the top and the bottom hem to be curved is because our body is a kind of like a cylinder so think of it that way and that's how it looks when you cut it out. After draping the pattern on my body and liking how much flare it has, I'm going to be copying the same pattern and I'm going to be cutting it on the fold of the fabric. This way I'm going to get a lot more space and room and I don't have to measure it out again. If you have the same skirt pattern and you're happy with it, make sure you just lay it down on the floor and cut it out again. And I did this two more times so I have an extra full skirt. If you're not as small as I am or if you have a lot more length that you'll need, make sure to cut more skirts so that you have the size that you want. Because I had a limited amount of the mesh fabric, I definitely tried to maximize how much I could do. So I laid down my skirt pieces first and you can see that I cut out three different skirt pieces here and I tried to get them as even as possible and then of course you're going to cut that out. Take your time with this and be smart. If you can get more than you can afford, then do it. This is a scrap piece of fabric that I got a long time ago in Los Angeles. So this is what my skirts ended up looking like. I followed the same pattern as before but I cut only two pieces. I used half of one part of the skirt and then half of the other part of the skirt. Now when I did the second cut, I actually had to invert it so it would lay correctly. And again, be smart on how you can adjust your fabric pieces to make it work. If you get a lot of the same fabric, like five yards, or depending if you're a taller person, maybe you'll need more. But be smart with how much fabric you have and how to use it. Sometimes you don't have to cut on the fold and you can just open the fabric and cut it out exactly where you need it to be there. Here I just wanted to show you that I'm trying to maximize how much of the fabric I can use without creating too much scrap fabric. And I even reversed my pattern so that it will be fine. Just make sure that your fabric is stretchy and that it hangs correctly. Because I have a lot of material, that doesn't mean that it will work properly. And luckily I was able to fit the same amount as much as I needed for both skirts. I didn't want to use the same piece of chiffon that I just cut because it was really hard just to make it straight and lay fine. So I just used the same skirt pieces and it was easier to see versus two pieces of chiffon. Alright, and then just cut that out when you finally have the second piece of your mesh skirt ready. Once you've finished that, combine all your white pieces of skirts and not your meshes and then serge the edges. Once you've done that, sew it onto your bodice top. And I'm sewing directly on top of it because I wanted to see how much space. I'm starting at the middle and I'm then I'm going to slowly pleat it across. Pleating is very easy. If you want to gather, you, you can gather as well. But me, I'm going to slowly pleat it from the center piece. So I'm going to sew all the center down first and then I'm going to make a box pleats going outward until I reach the edge. One of the biggest reasons why we're sewing directly on top of the fabric is because we're going to cover it later with a black piece of ribbon. 
And also we're going to be covering it with the chiffon the same way that we did it with the top bodice piece. So continue doing your pleating and sewing until you've finished all around the bodice top. I just wanted to emphasize, make sure that all of your skirt material can fit onto your bodice and that's why we're pleating it. If your pleats don't fit all into the bodice, I'm sorry, you're going to have to seam rip it out and then sew it all again until it does fit. Now here we are attaching the chiffon to the skirt. I have the dress underneath and I had to double check to make sure that the right side of the chiffon was being attached. And just like the bodice, we are going to be attaching it upwards and then it'll fold downwards so that way it creates a little bit of puff. Honestly, you didn't have to do it this way. You could have just sewn it straight on just like how the skirt is because I'm going to be covering it with a black ribbon just as the picture before. I also want to clarify that I started all the way at the edge of the bodice and I'm working my way to the center. Make sure you have a pinpoint at the center so you don't cross it and then do this on the other side as well. Once you have finished attaching it, it is time to add a zipper. That's correct, because now we want to finish and close the dress. First things first, I'm going to gather the hem of the white skirt and I'm going to sew it down and keep sewing and binding it until I get to the top. This is because I want it all to be very even and symmetrical and making sure that the bodice lines are all meant to be the same. When you get to the very edge, do not backstitch it. Instead, just let it be open. Now we're going to start to add our zipper. So take out your zipper, unzip it, and make sure the zipper is facing outward so you can zip it up. And then you're going to put the metal part at the very top of your bodice piece and wrap the tape end inside the seam. Now push the seam open, and this is where we're going to be sewing the zipper. The zipper is facing right sides forward against the wrong sides of the fabric. Now make sure that there's nothing underneath your dress and begin sewing slowly. Make sure you have a zipper foot attached and I'm doing a straight stitch. You want to take this part slow so you do not accidentally sew any of your skirts to the top because seam ripping is a pain in the butt. And make sure you go all the way down the length of the zipper, stopping at the other metal end, and then repeat it on the other side. I'm saying go slow because really I am going very slow, so I had to speed up this footage. And make sure to check out other tutorials about sewing zippers in dresses or in garments. Next things next, I'm going to be using black satin ribbon as my embellishment pieces, just like the cosplay. I'm going to be wrapping it around each shoulder strap and cutting it off from there. So it'll look like this. Isn't that cute? I will also be using this ribbon for the bodice waistline. Because I am using this and I have a limited amount, I only cut about two to three inches just for safety. I'm using my universal adhesive to sew it to attach this onto the dress. The reason why I'm not sewing this on is because I don't want any stitches showing and I do not want the ribbon to fray. Also, I want it to lay perfectly nice without having any of the fabric bothering it. So now I'm just going to attach it using glue. Other glues that are comparable are Aline's Tacky Glue or E6000. And now we are just going to wrap it around the strap piece. Do this for both sides. Now attach the back of the straps to the back of the dress. Use the zipper as a guide, making sure that they are symmetrical. Try the dress on one more time and make sure everything fits accordingly because this black piece of ribbon that goes around the waist, does, or the empire waist, does not cinch it at all. This is purely for decoration and for hiding your seam work. Cleopatra's dress has a little bit of black tails on the front of it, so make sure you have a little bit hanging down. And I'm going to pin this in place just looking at how far I need to let it hang. Modify it accordingly to your body type. Obviously, I'm a shorter person, so I'm not going to let it hang that long, and I always can cut it off later, but I decided to make it short. 
Once I have completely figured out how long I want my ribbon to be around the waistband, I'm going to cut off that ribbon and then cut it in half so it is perfectly symmetrical and I can start at the zipper and not cover the zipper. I'm applying a generous amount of the universal adhesive onto this ribbon and that's because this dries very quickly and then once I put it on the dress it is there forever so be careful and maybe take your time. I already knew what I was doing so it's fine. Make sure to mark where your seam is going to be where it meets in the front. I did that with one small pin on both pieces of ribbon and then I'm going to overlay that when I put it on the dress. Here you can see I'm starting at the back of the zipper and slowly and definitely pressing and giving it a lot of strength and pressing it onto the waistline and the seam. As you can see it's already staying there and a bit of the glue dried a little bit too quickly so I had to go back and add more. Finish this last step and add a brooch in the middle and you are completely done. I'm now going to show you a few different looks that I did while wearing this dress in hopes of giving you some inspiration on how to wear it after you've made it. Look number one is just an all natural makeup and no jewelry. My hair is down and this is what the dress looks like in all of its glory. This is so that you don't have the bells and whistles to distract you from the dress that you've made from scratch. I do take that back. I do have a brooch that's hiding the seam of both of the ribbons in the front at the waistband. I definitely recommend using a brooch that's handed down from generation to generation or you can choose something that you like and place it there. Let me show you styling number two. Number two, I actually created some of the accessories from the picture and those are the earrings, the necklace, and the headband and the brooch on the middle of the ribbon. And I paired it with a gold choker and I'm actually using a bang clip. This is my real hair with fake hair. You can see that it changed the look dramatically and it even looks a little bit more like the character. So this is more of a wedding cosplay as opposed to just a dress now. Here is the accessories up close and I did make these. I used a little bit of different materials but in a future video you will see what these are made out of and how to make them yourself to follow the cosplay. You can also add a veil to the headband and it will look very gorgeous or if you're not a veil type of person, you don't have to add it there. I actually did not have any material to make a veil attached to the headband. Anyways, onward to the final look. The final look is actually the full-on cosplay in a wedding outfit. So now we have the dress, we have the accessories, we have the makeup, and a wig. The wig I'm using is a long green wig. It has a slight curl to it and it's got long bangs. If you want, you can get something more similar to the actual cosplay, but this is the one that I had on hand. So if you don't like having bangs on your face on your wedding day, don't worry about it. Now if you're trying to be more accurate to the cosplay in a wedding dress form, you should probably get bangs. That's what I'm telling you to do. <laughs> but yeah, this is the completed Cleopatra wedding dress. And make sure that you have the accurate colors. And here you can actually see the difference with the wig having it on versus my regular hair. 
it makes my skin look more tan versus as pale as I usually look. But this is what it looks like. Thank you so much for watching and thanks so much to Tracy Soden for giving me this challenge of making an Egyptian cosplay wedding dress. I definitely hope that she enjoyed all the looks, the process, and if you guys are really inspired, make sure to leave me a comment down below if you want me to try a different challenge and see if I can recreate it. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed already. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And I'm sorry that it was a little bit long, but I wanted to make sure that people understood and can make this dress for themselves. And I will see you in a future video.